rub and smoke barbecue. We'll hit the ground running with the late summer 2020 opening of donations in the amounts of 5 to $50 or whatever you want to donate will be greatly appreciated. Go over to G-O-F-U-N-D-M-E dot C-O-M. Search rubbed and smoke BBQ. Oh, that's right. Check it out today. Give them some of your hard-earned money right now. Rubbed and smoke barbecue on GoFundMe.com and tell them you've heard about it here. Transmedia Worldwide. Next segment coming up right now. Okay, we are going to go to Larry Tracy. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. And, uh... Hello. There we are. Larry, how are hey. you, my friend? Well, it's been a long time, James. Yes. We, we have not chatted since the, uh, since the, uh, the lockdown began That's right. yeah um larry get, give us uh, l- l- let's talk a little bit about this uh this campaign manager that uh trump replaced uh this bill steepian will uh replace brad pascal tell me a little bit about this this shake up there well um pascal the guy that's been replaced is, is basically a, a digital guy he did a lot on era some people think he got took a lot more credit in 2016 than he really deserved, but he he did it. We live in a digital age, but I don't think he was really the, the political guy. I don't know anything about this new guy that's come in. But one of I give you an example: the Tulsa uh, rally, where they were buying into this thing that a million people had applied. Then it came out later that there'd been a big psychological operation planned by the Democrats, which I really had to admire. It was rather clever. And when they sent in all these invitations, I, I found found out that our 16-year-old granddaughter uh, was one of those doing it at her high school, and they got hundreds of kids to send in invitations. So that went on all over the country, and Pascal should have been uh, a little bit a little bit more perceptive about that, but he was bragging that about that. So uh, hopefully it'll be a, a difference. I, I was just watching on Fox News Frank Luntz, who is a, a great track record of a man who knows how to use words for it, and he was giving some good advice. He said the message is really off, and uh, they, they, they haven't been able to, to target Biden the way they should. I mean, uh, Biden is uh, – it, it's in, 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 impossible to think of a, a political campaign in which a candidate stands up in front – and reads every word off of a teleprompter, then refuses to take any questions, and he winds up 10 points ahead. <laughs> so uh, the, the thing is, this is not Biden versus Trump. This is Trump versus Trump. That, that's where the problem is. And they've got to get him to have some discipline. Again, I'm watching his speech in the, uh, in the Rose Garden. Uh, he kept talking about what they'd done in the past, how they had done, uh, done away with the uh, deregulations. And, and uh, then he... Uh, talks about only that, but he doesn't say the Obama-Biden regulations. He said that's what was crippling the economy. That's why unemployment kept down, and then it really shot up when we took them off. All of those things, he ought to put every negative thing that he can find, bring it out, and put Biden's name to it. Uh, I, I hope uh, they're, they're saying, well, there isn't much time left. Uh, there, are, there's still, there were still almost four months before the election. Traditionally, James, people have said people in the United States don't care about elections really until after Labor Day. I don't think that's the truth anymore. I think this whole pandemic and the economic slowdown has caused people to start concentrating more and more. But the idea that we could think of having Joe Biden as president and uh, the the squad and and all of those in running it, uh, this is going to be an economic disaster for this country if, if they are in. And from another standpoint, from strictly on uh, the social, the moral aspect, they're going to appoint two very, very liberal Supreme Court justices, and the uh, the pro-life movement will be dead in the water for that. There will be no chance. Uh, so th- this is this is such a, a vital in election, and and Trump is, I said it before, he's his own worst enemy. The way he goes up there, he's got no discipline, no focus. And uh, if he loses this election, he'll have a lot of blame to bear. 
So that's my soapbox on that. <laughs> we have got Larry Tracy with us today. He joins us live here in our broadcast, coast to coast and border to border on iHeartRadio. And um, there is a, uh, a new patriotic group that is out there that is vowing to erect two monuments for everyone taken down or destroyed by this uh, unhinged mob. Well, 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 what do you make of all, this, all these statues being knocked down and everything else? Well, it's just that they want to do away with history. They, uh, and, and the fact is that the, the Democrats are lying. Uh, Trump gave a very good speech out at Mount Rushmore. And Tabby Duckworth, Tammy Duckworth, the congresswoman who lost both legs in, uh, in Iraq, uh, she was on one program and she said he spent his entire time at Rushmore talking about dead traitors. He didn't talk about any Confederate generals. So the only people he spoke about were the people up on Rushmore. Uh, Washington, is he a dead traitor? And, but uh, they want to do it. They just want to go and, and hit everyone who were people of their time. They owned slaves. It was not right. But that was the morality of that time. And so I, I think there, there is that silent majority that is out there. I mean, I, I read a lot of the uh, emails and uh, websites that, that are uh, dealing with political things. And I, I get the impression there was a seething anger on people at what they see happening. Uh, Seattle is a good example. The only reason the mayor moved against the uh, CHOP and the Chaz uh, Autonomous Zone was when they came and demonstrated in front of her house. <laughs> then she decided it was no longer the summer of love that it had to be done away with. <laughs> and I, I think he ought to bring out the fact that Seattle is what the United States could be if this gang gets into power. Uh, and, and let me a word of caution here. A lot of the Democrat, a lot of the Republicans are saying, "Well, this was the same thing. The polls were the same way in 2016." At that point, the Democrats rejoiced at Trump getting the nomination of the Republicans because they thought he was a clown, and therefore he would have we no competition whatsoever to Hillary Clinton. Well, they've learned from that lesson, and they're not going to make the same mistakes. So they're going to. Uh, they're going to go into those battleground states, but whether whether Biden is the horse to ride, I I still have this feeling in the back of my mind that at the last minute they're going to they're going to pull him out of there and some and put someone else on. I know that's probably not likely, but he is such an incompetent candidate. And and I've just had one other thing. When I was in my last three years on active duty in the army, when I was loaned the State Department. I would frequently go over to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee to listen to the hearings. I just wanted to get the sense of what was happening on the Congress. And uh, Biden was uh, the chairman. He was sharp. He was engaged. He was very charming. Uh, I, I grew up 15 miles from Wilmington, Delaware, so, and I'm Irish Catholic. He's Irish Catholic. I, I, I sort of had a, a feeling of, of, of kinship with this guy. Boy, the Biden that I've seen in the last year in the debates and now in these uh, so-called press conferences that he gives is not a shadow of the person. And there have been polls out showing that up to 20 percent of Democrats think he's suffering from early stages of dementia. Yes. Uh, I mean, this is uh, uh, it's almost like I'm reading a Robert Ludlum novel that uh, the Democrats would put up. A major party would put up someone like Biden. But they had a pretty lackluster group of candidates uh, running those 16 or 17. So I guess he was considered the best of all or the most electable of all. And uh, Trump is making the job a little easier for them. So. <laughs> we have got Larry Tracy with us today. He joins us live. He, of course, has Bring Home the Bacon. It is a uh, tremendous, tremendous book if you're in the uh, public speaking world. Uh, you can uh, you can use his S three P three system, and uh, Larry Tracy joins us today here in our broadcast. Well, Larry, uh, as we wrap up here with you, uh, my friend, uh, what do you make of uh, this lockdown and COVID nineteen and all these things? Well, it's um, right now the hot topic is the schools, and there are so many so many people, uh, especially a doctor, what is his name, Dallas, I think, from Stanford who is saying children are not carriers of the disease, and therefore the teachers are not in danger, and children have virtually a 0% chance of dying from it. So the idea of uh, holding the schools back is a way of keeping the economy down, I think, because therefore parents can't 
can't go to work if they, they've got little children at home and they can't hire babysitters and all. So uh, I know this seems uh, conspiratorial, but I think the Democrats want to continue to have the economy suffering so they can use that as a weapon in November. Uh, I think the, the more that the economy pulls up, uh, the way the stock market, and I, again, I think Trump ought to stop saying about the stock market and talk about 401Ks. Stock market seems somewhat elitist, but 401Ks depend on the stock market, and everybody that has any sort of a savings plan can do it. And compare what the uh, taxes of the Obama, of Obama, of Biden administration uh, would be uh, on it, so that he makes a comparison. But he's he's frustrated in not being able to get a land a really hard punch on Biden because of the way he's staying in his basement and venturing out only a little bit. Well, at one point, though, John, uh, James, before we end, uh, the polls don't look good, but there are a couple that I would call your listeners' attention to. Uh, Rasmussen was the most accurate pollster in, 19, in 2016. He came within two-tenths of a point of predicting what Hillary Clinton's popular vote amount would be. Uh, last two weeks, uh, last, I guess early last week, they came out with a poll, the first time they've had a head-to-head poll of Biden versus Trump, and it was not not heartening because Biden had about a 10-point lead. This week he came out, and he does likely voters, which is much more reliable than rather than uh, registered voters, and uh, Biden is down to a three-point lead. So I think that's encouraging. There's another one, and you can look this up on, um, well, I guess on Google. It, it appeared in Real Clear Politics. It was by an organization called the Democracy Institute, which partners with the Daily and Sunday Telegraph in the U.K. And they came out with a poll, and it, the headline was, and you can find this in Google, U.S. media is clueless, Trump on track for re-election. And when there they had them even at about 47 each. What was interesting was when they went down and they categorized the various questions, Trump had uh, something like a 20% or maybe higher amount of black voters for him, and he had an even higher percentage of Latino voters. Well, if the Democrats lose those percentages, they can't win. So that's, that's a poll. I don't, I don't know how reliable it was. Uh, then one other point to bring up, the, the New York Times Siena poll, which uh, gave Biden about a 16-point lead. I looked through all of the internals about that, and there was one interesting point there. They only had a 1% to 2% response rate for their phone calls which means a lot of people were just not answering the phone or refusing to talk, and therefore how valid is a poll like that. So all is not dim, but the thing gets back to it. It's, it's not the campaign manager. It's the Trump himself and how he can discipline and get a point across to draw a very accurate contrast between he and Biden and show people what the country would be like if Biden and his group are, are in power. Well, Larry, uh, I appreciate you making time for us.